This video was created because of Atlantis. What's funny about that is this video is also not anywhere remotely about Atlantis. However, it's about something I believe is far more interesting. Also, something that is rooted in fact. The Younger Dryas is a period about 14,500 years ago that is characterized by a swift return to near glacial temperatures at the tail end of the previous ice age within the Northern Hemisphere, dropping temperatures in Greenland by as much as 10 degrees centigrade. This quite obviously had massive impacts on the global conditions, and humans had to adapt to the quickly changing environment. For the sake of simplicity, and keeping this short history short, I'll focus primarily on people in the southeastern United States. There was a notable drop in population during the time between 12,800 to 11,900 years ago, followed by a continued low population in the region until the termination of the Younger Dryas period and beginning of the Holocene period, in which we see a dramatic increase in population. The people of this time period, known today as the Clovis, have been incredibly important in helping us understand the impact and severity of the Younger Dryas, as much of our knowledge about humans comes from them. The data shows that during the time of the Younger Dryas, the Clovis disappeared as a continent-wide peoples. This does not mean this was an extinction event for them, but more likely that they became a more dispersed and regional group of people. We know this because there is no distinct archaeological evidence for the Clovis after the beginning of the Younger Dryas. From this data, we can infer the Younger Dryas did have an impact on human population, at least in this area, and there may be a connection between climate and culture change in this time period. However, this does not mean that this experience was global, nor can we say for certain that these changes in population are directly caused by the period, as correlation does not equal causation. The impact of the Younger Dryas was not limited to humans. Flora and fauna in some regions went through changes as well. For example, the vegetation of the Appalachian region changed drastically from majority spruce and tamarack boreal forests to a more temperate and broad-leafed variety. There is also evidence of fauna conducting long-distance shifts and changes in abundance. These changes, however, varied widely between different local ecosystems and microclimates, telling us that this period was one of rapid reorganization of local ecosystems. Furthermore, the Younger Dryas coincides with the extinction of many different species of megafauna, including the woolly mammoth, saber-toothed tiger, and many others. While the climate change of the Younger Dryas has not been conclusively linked to these extinctions, Ecological and climate factors have been connected to two out of three localized extinction events. The conclusion of the period also coincided with the event known as Meltwater Pulse 1b, which raised global sea levels by as much as 92 feet and shaped the continents we know today. Some believe this event is what Plato was referring to when discussing the sinking of Atlantis, and also what prompted me to make this video. However, it's far more likely that Atlantis was nothing but a myth, which I'll discuss further in the future. The exact cause of the period has yet to be proven, but the most commonly accepted hypothesis for the cause of the Younger Dryas was first put forward in 1988 by Finnish scientist Claes Ruth, and later expanded on by American Wallace Broker. This theory claims that large amounts of fresh water flowed into the North Atlantic due to the retreat of the Laurentide Ice Sheet and the subsequent draining of Lake Agassiz, a glacial meltwater lake that covered a large part of north-central North America. This addition of fresh water to the Atlantic disrupted the normal flow of seawater in the Thermalahine circulation, which, besides being far too hard to pronounce, is defined as the system of surface and deep water currents that distributes large amounts of heat around the globe. The exact path the fresh water from Lake Agassiz took is still heavily debated. Some believe it flowed east along the Lawrence River into the Atlantic, while others believe it flowed north along the Mackenzie River into the Arctic Ocean. The northern route along the Mackenzie is more widely accepted, as the northward path would have had a more profound effect on the environment and be more likely to cause an event such as the Younger Dryas. There is, however, another, more fun theory about the cause of the Younger Dryas. That is that the Younger Dryas was caused by the airburst or impact of a comet or asteroid above North America. This airburst would have in turn caused the destabilization of the ice sheets that led to the Younger Dryas. Evidence for this theory includes the existence, in certain areas, substances like carbon spherules, magnetic spherules, iridium, platinum, charcoal, soot, and fullerenes enriched with helium-3, as well as so-called black mats, areas of nutrient-rich soil that have been found in as many as 50 sites across North America. This strata of soil, if it were deposited synchronously, would serve as an effective argument for the Younger Dryas impact hypothesis. In addition to this, in 2018, 
A crater was located under the Hiawatha Glacier. I'm about to birth butcher this, but Kurt Kajer, the lead author of the paper, speculated that it might date to the Pleistocene, which would allow for a possible connection to the Younger Dryas. At a later date, though, it was accurately dated to 58 million years ago. In addition, much of the other evidence has not been replicated, and there is further data that the distribution of the, quote, black mat was not synchronous. So evidence for the in impact hypothesis is unfortunately lacking. Overall, the Younger Dryas is a period that is still surrounded by many mysteries and debates. The scientific and historical communities have come to few absolute conclusions about the conditions of the period, but we can tell for sure it was definitely not the mass extinction event that many believe it was. Were humans affected? Absolutely. But was it to the point that it destroyed entire civilizations? Most likely not. This was a super fun topic for my first deep dive, and if you enjoyed, please go check out my other content that I may or may not have posted yet. Also, if I missed anything or got something wrong, please let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching.